The art of decorating sewing machines reached its zenith in the 1890s with the development of silverback decals. With this system, translucent colors were backed with silver paint to create decals that glistened with a metallic shimmer. It was so successful that it dominated sewing machine decoration for more than four decades. This 1895 Eldridge is a great example, or at least it will be once it's restored. Like many machines of this era, decades of use have worn away the colors, leaving only the silver backing. Fortunately, there's a way to create decals that almost perfectly reproduced the lithographed industrial transfers originally used. To see how it's done, let's make a replacement for this decal. Start by taking the picture of the decal. Set the camera to maximum resolution, use good lighting, and a tripod to get the best possible image. It may be necessary to combine parts of several decals to get one complete enough to work with. An alternative is to search the internet for pictures of the machine and use those as a starting point. Import the image into your photo processing software. Enlarge it to see the finest details and then work your way around the image, repairing any damage that you find. This is by far the most time-consuming part of the whole process. Once that's done, resize it to match the original decal. Print it on transparent water slide decal paper, making sure to reverse it before printing. This is necessary because during the application process, this decal is going to be turned upside down. By reversing it before printing, it's sure to come out correct when we're done with it. Then clear coat the decal. What we need to do next is spray the back with silver paint. The problem with this is that once it's sprayed, uh, the decal is almost impossible to see to cut out. To solve this, we'll cover the decal with masking tape and use an X-Acto knife with a new blade to cut around the decal. Only very light pressure is needed to cut the tape. And there we go. Comparing over a dozen silver spray paints, I found Spaztex Miracrome works the best. Spray very light fogging coats, waiting a minute between each one to let it dry. Four sweeps per spray produces a finish that most closely matches the luster of the original decals. Decreasing the number of sweeps per spray produces a shinier result. Experiment to determine what works best for you. It takes 15 to 20 of these light coats to completely cover the decal. After the silver paint's dry, buff it very lightly to remove any loose paint dust. Then peel off the masking and apply at least five very light layers of clear coat, waiting a minute between each one. Light coats are needed because most clears will attack the silver paint if applied too thickly. Once the clear coat's cured, Cut out the decal with an X-Acto knife, which cuts cleaner and easier than even the finest scissors. And here we are. The decal can't be cut before painting because the paint will seal the edges, preventing it from sliding off when wetted. Now comes the fun part, applying the decal. Cut out a piece of scrap decal paper slightly larger than the decal itself. Thoroughly wet the back with water, then wet the back of the decal slide the plastic backing off of the scrap paper, then slide the decal upside down onto it. This step transfers some of the decal adhesive on the scrap piece to the silver side of the decal. And here we go. Smooth it out and blot it dry. And you're pretty much done. And here's the finished product. I like to test decals on a surface painted with gloss black paint before working on a machine. This provides the opportunity to make color adjustments. Let the decal dry a day and then clear coat it to seal and lock it down.
Now, I'll be the first to admit that this takes a lot of work, but the results can be fantastic. I hope you found this video interesting, and once again, thanks for watching.